This conference will now be recorded. President Nahadar, can you hear me Yes, sir, I can. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sorry, I had trouble getting connected. Um, do we have a quorum on? We're missing a. Uh... Cindy, I think we're only missing Mr. Garcia and Mr. Gandara. Okay. I know uh, Mr. Morales is trying to get on now, and Mr. Gandara let me know that he was going to be a little late. And so, but if we, we've got five of us, then we can go ahead and start. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So with that, this workshop meeting of the Board of Trustees of Socorro ISD is being held November 10th of 2020. The time is 532. On March 16th, Governor Greg Abbott granted a request by Attorney General Ken Paxton to temporarily suspend a limited number of open meetings laws to the extent necessary to allow telephonic or video conference meetings in response to the coronavirus. In accordance with those suspended rules, we certify the following. Notice of this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. Number one, although members of the board are not gathered in a central physical location, we do have a quorum in attendance at this meeting by a telephone call and internet access. Number two, we are meeting by use of both telephone conference call, online access, and through use of an email link for questions. Number three, if a member of the public submitted written comments in advance, the board president or a member of the administration will read the comments into record before or during the board's consideration of that item. If you would like to provide comment at a future meeting conducted by video conference or telephone call, please follow instructions on the meeting notice. Number four, all other meeting procedures will adhere to board adopted procedures to the extent practical. Number five, an audio recording of this meeting is being made and will be available to the public at a later date. And number six, we apologize in advance for any unforeseeable difficulties and ask for your patience as we navigate unprecedented conditions. Number seven, if you have questions about these suspended laws, please call the Office of the Attorney General at 888-672-6787. Okay, so we can, we are called to order now. And if you'll all please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, which is going to be led tonight by Omar Safuentes. Good evening, uh, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Omar. And just for the record of this recording, guys, I'm going to go ahead and, and do a roll call just so that Claudia has a record. Is Mr. Morales on? Uh, no, ma'am. We're working with him to try and get him on at the time. Okay. Mr. Gatta? Present. And let's see. Mr. Gondetta? Is he on yet? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Mr. Garcia is not either, right? Uh, no, ma'am. He is not in yet. Okay. Mr. Mena? 
Present. And Ms. Rodriguez? Present. Okay. We do have a quorum in attendance, so we can go ahead and get started. Our uh, only item this night is number two, board workshop A, Socorro ISD Health Plan. Mr. Cremona, the floor is yours. Good evening, new board president Najera, Dr. Espinosa, and members of the board. My name is Mario Permona, Director of Employee Benefits and Risk Management. Today, Mr. Gary Heisel and I are here to present information related to the health plan projections for fiscal year 21-2022. I'm hoping that everyone has a copy of the presentation, which I'll be, be uh, making reference to. The following presentation summarizes data reviewed by our insurance consultant, Gallagher. It includes information such as plan history, projection assumptions, renewal workup, areas to impact plan and possible next steps to mitigate costs. Now, moving on to slide three and four, or it would be page number six and seven of the board handout. These two slides can be used as a reference when compared to the summary of plan changes. Slide number three includes current plan designs and slide number four includes current rates. Any changes and or recommendations will need to be made before our next annual benefits open enrollment period, which typically takes place during the month of April. This would be for the following plan year, which becomes effective as of July 1st, 2021. At this point, I will turn it over to Mr. Gary Heisel so he can continue the presentation. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, Mr. Gary Heisel, as Mario said, I work for Gallagher and we are the consultant for the district and we have put together a presentation for people to review, to go over, excuse me, um, the plan for the following fiscal year, July 2021 to June of 2022. We have uh, some information talking about what we think is going to be happening next year. We have some, some ideas on ways to potentially mitigate some of the costs and then some options to consider as we go forward uh, throughout our discussion. So if we go then to page, sorry, slide five, excuse me, of the presentation, on the top of the slide shows plan history. What we have here, we just wanted to kind of level set everybody as to what has happened so far over the past couple of years. So in July of 2018, the district decided to make no changes to either the plans or the various carriers or the rates, whether district rates or employee rates. Uh, the following year, July of 19, there were some discussions in trying to uh, help us some of the costs. Or there are two, there are two plans, the premier plan. Well, on the premier plan, the basic plan, there was an increase in the deductible. The premier plan deductible went up by $150 for single and $300 for family. The basic to, uh, plan that deductible went up to 200 for five, 200 single and 400 for family. Uh, in an interest to help with costs, the district decided to implement express scripts for the pharmacy vendor on July 1 of 19. Initially, during that time, the entire medical plan went out to bid, and the decision was to stay with the current administrator, who is Cigna. And also, there were some increases to employ contributions relatively small uh, for that particular year. In July of 2020, so the, the plan that the year that we are in currently, uh, the decision was made to have, again, no changes to the rates or the plans or the carriers. Okay, if we go to the following page on page six. What we wanted to do here was go through a little bit of some of the history, some of the financials uh, on, on, the, uh, on the history. And so what we have here is we've shown uh, currently with the district, there are four plans. There's the premier plan we've spoken about before. There's the basic plan. There's the HSA, which is a high deductible plan. 
And then there's an independent plan. There's really more for opt outs. So for the first year that we looked at from July of 18 through June of 19, um, the budget was about $48.4 million. So it's on the far right hand side. What actually occurred was about 53.1 million. So the plan was in a deficit for that year of about $4.6 million. As you can see with that plan, with that particular year, the premier plan was obviously the big driver on that. That plan was uh, almost $9 million uh, in a deficit. For July of 19, you may recall that there were some plan changes and also some contribution increases for employees. Uh, I believe actually the district may have changed a little bit. So for that particular year, uh, the budget was $50 million, 50.4. What actually happened was $56 million. So it was in a deficit of $6.1 million. Again, the premier plan is really the driving force through all of this. For this particular plan year, uh, we, at least as of this moment, we should be getting claims in soon for the month of October, but we have uh, information for the months of July, August, and September. So that's three months. So for this first three months, the budget is about $12.6 million. That's going to, if you went out, projected that for the year, that's around a $50 million number again. What's actually happening is $14.8 million. And it's, so far for the first three months, it's lost. The deficit is $2.1 million. Again, the premier plan is driving that. Basic plan is slight negative, uh, but I think we'll turn around as the year progresses. If you project for, I'm going to really use kind of round numbers in my head for this particular year, the budget is going to be around $50 million again, uh, but the actuals look like they're going to be closer to say 59 or $60 million. We project this year the district could lose between eight, nine, possibly even $10 million. We project all the way forward through to June of 2021. Okay, so for the following page, uh, we did a, what we call a projection. We said, what do we believe the plan is going to need from a cost perspective for the next plan year of July 1st of 2021? So when we do this, we looked at uh, for an employer of the size of Socorro, we look at the last what we call the last 12 months of claims. So that's claims from October of last year to September of this year. Administrative fee, this is what Cigna is charging. We assume a 3% increase to that. The stop loss, that is coverage for large claims, both individual and total. Um, typically, we see that number going up roughly 20% on the individual level, claims for an individual, and 5% on the stop loss. Generally, we try to bid this out every year so we can get lower than that. But I think for the sake of this exercise and trying to do a projection, we would rather project something here, even if it's a little high, just to be a little conservative in that regard. Uh, friend, this is the expected, I'm sorry, the expected cost increase of claims for both medical and pharmacy. And this is used on an annual basis, so we can see on the medical side it's going up. Uh, about 5.8 percent this is based on what we see from different carriers and the uh, book of business for gallagher nationally pharmacy that tends to go up a little bit higher that's going up about 7.7 percent a year and this has come throughout the industry and throughout the nation much of this is driven by uh, specialty drugs uh, but also we're seeing pharmacy being more and more of a percentage of grand total medical claims for this estimate, we've assumed it. what we call no migration between the planets. So whoever is in the premier plan, for example, we're projecting they're going to stay in that premier plan. Same with the basic and so forth. We assume with this that the current benefits, so the benefit designs, deductibles, and co-pays and so forth, all of that will also remain the same. And the last item is expected pharmacy rebates. So by moving to Express Scripts, the district does receive rebates on a quarterly basis. Uh, which is cash back into the plan. We have assumed that we all go into it. Uh, so we've included that in the overall costs. With all of this projecting forward, we are anticipating a needed rate action of 27.6%. What that is, is um, if you recall back a couple slides, uh, when 
uh, Mario had mentioned that you know the employees pay a certain amount of the district has a 575. With those numbers multiplied by the people in the particular plans, that's what we're comparing against. So that would be a 27%, 27.6% increase to those plans. If we go to the following page, which is page slide eight, this is really just, I'm not going to go through all of this, but this is really what the claims are looking like through the year. So for this current year on the bottom right hand side, second number from the bottom, for the last 12 months, it's $54 million just claims by themselves. The prior 12 months, it was up at just under $50 million. So it's gone up roughly $4 million on a year over year basis. If we go to the following slide, slide nine, and excuse me, again, I don't want to go through all of this, but essentially what we do is we start with the claim numbers uh, for both medical and pharmacy. You can see on the on the left hand side, there is a red number on the line for pharmacy rebates. That's whenever we talked about that. That is what we anticipate the district, uh, well, actually, for that, what we think the district is going to get uh, for rebates. That's so about $2 million. And then additionally, we have shown claims over the specific deductible level. So those are uh, claims over $400,000 per individual. So for this period of time from October through September, there's about $855,000 that we cluttered it up because that would not be the responsibility of the district. We take, uh, convert those numbers to a per employee number, uh, claim value that's three lines down, trend it forward, and you get at the very, very bottom $903.75. That is what, on a per employee basis, what we expect the claims to be. On the right hand side of the top, this is where you may recall we talked about administrative fees and stop loss premiums going up by their respective percentages 3% for the administration, 20% for the individual, and 5% for the aggregate. So that number on a per head basis goes from $72 to $81. So when you get down to the very, very bottom, budgeting rates. This is the what the district contributes and what employees contribute. It's about $772. We believe next year the plan, if you were to uh, fund it to exactly where we think it's going to be, it would need to be $985. That $985 is the sum of the $903 on the bottom left, and the $8182 you can see on the right hand side about midway through the page. That's your 985. When you divide the two, it's 27.6%. Okay, if we can, let's go to page 10. Now, obviously, 27 is a big number. Um, and I think there's, you want to, um, our job really is to tell you what we believe is going to happen. As I try to tell clients, and I've had, I've run into this um, with, other clients, what we believe we need to do, our job is to tell you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. You know, if I think the number is 27%, I don't want to tell you it's going to be 3%. I think that's unfair to all parties involved. So our job is to tell you what we think is going to happen. Now, there are ways to mitigate these costs and try to lower them. And here's a, a sample of some of the items that you can do. One, as that was done a couple of years ago, is you can increase deductibles, out of pocket levels, and co-pays for certain plans or all plans. You can also do what's called a narrow network. This is where you would have a plan, uh, say for example, Providence, where if people want to go to that network, that's the only um, providers that you could go to, or you would get a better, uh, better uh, benefit level, whether it's a lower deductible or higher. Uh, cost share uh, by the plan for that. The reason we chose Providence is because when we looked at this information, the majority of your medical claims, I don't have it off the top of my head, but the majority of your medical claims did go to Providence. So again, that's, a, that's an area to consider. That doesn't necessarily mean other networks could do something better, but again, I think for the sake of this exercise, we wanted to tell you that Providence is uh, what we use as an example of what we can do to potentially uh, save some money. And we can do it, obviously, is increase what the employees pay. That's always a hard 
discussion to get into, but then there's another way to be able to um, mitigate some of those costs. Uh, another thing to do, if you wanted to, would be to bid the medical plan. And recall that was done a couple years ago, and it stayed with Signal, which is fine. But um, what we're finding in the marketplace is, um, particularly in the world of COVID, is uh, some of these carriers are really hungry and want to be able to um, be very, very aggressive. We've seen on a few instances in which um, some vendors are the or some payers are coming in quite aggressively on the pricing. So that would be one you consider. And what you can get with that is a variety of things. You can get deeper discounts. You can get even a wider network versus what you have today with um, Cigna. And you can also get an improved administrative cost. Uh, perhaps they'll charge a little bit less on the administrative fee uh, than what is being charged today with Cigna. And then lastly, as I'm sure you could uh, perceive, you could do you know, a combination of the above. You could maybe change the plan and increase contributions. You could maybe go narrow network. Uh, maybe do the plan. There's a, a bunch of mixing and matching you can do. But again, these are some ways that you could potentially help the plan from a financial perspective. Okay, if we go to page, slide 11. This is where we're going to get started to get a little bit more granular. So, you know, one of the things for, uh, we could do is we talked about a few slides ago was the premier plan. The premier plan is really the plan that is losing the money for the district. Um, every, all the other plans are actually doing quite well. And so th it might be some consideration to make some adjustments to the plan, potentially even eliminate that particular plan. Uh, we've gone to Cigna for some pricing. Uh, decrements and we do have some uh, decrements for changes to the premier and the basic plan. We decided not to go to get any discounting, not discounting, uh, decrements for the HSA plan because that plan is running so well. Uh, we really want people to be in that plan. It's, it's performing well and we want to continue that. So with that, we've uh, asked for increased deductibles out of pockets, even emergency room and you know, lower the co-insurance. Uh, last time I asked you, we talked a little bit about specialty putting a specialty drug copay. That's not a big item, but it is something to consider because right now you do not have that. Uh, the three that we did talk about is potentially removing the premier plan. Uh, could help the financials. There's some trade offs for that, but that would be something to consider. And then finally, as we spoke on earlier, is you could increase employee contributions uh, to direct more into the plan for that. So up to this point, are there any questions before we start diving into a little bit more detail? Yes, President Nahid, I do have a question. Yes, sir, Dr. Espinosa. Yes, a uh, uh, question. So you mentioned the, the premier plan is, um, you know, it's a concern as far as it losing money. My question is this, about what do we, I don't, we probably won't know the answer to this question right now, but about what percentage of our employees are on the premier plan? I do know that. So, um, let's see, where is that? Mario, I don't know if you can go back to any slides, but on slide four. Page seven, Dr. Espinosa. Page seven? Very good. Mm -hmm. So, three more. Okay, very good. So, right, it says current rates to the top monthly. So on the second column of that, what we've shown there is the enrollment for each of the plans. So currently, uh, the district has uh, 5,463 employees, of which almost 1,700 are in the premier plan. So doing a little math on my head, that's roughly 25%. What, what slide are you on again? Because I thought on my seven. It's, it's um, slide four. I think it's page seven of your... Uh, exhibits? Correct. So it's slide number four. Okay, I'm on slide four now. Okay. So you said, okay, there's about 1,691 then. 1,691, that's correct. That's who's in the premier plan. The bulk of the people, as you can see, are in the basic plan. Right. There are okay. a small number of people in the HSA plan and then the alternate bank, which is the indemnity plan. Those are uh, basically opt outs. Okay. 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 It is. Any other questions we have before we start diving into a little more of the detail?
I think okay. we're okay to continue. Okay, very good. So why don't we, if we could, let's go to slide 12, which is probably page 15 on your uh, exhibits. At the top, it says plan change summary. So what we've done here is we've shown here for the platinum plan, oh, it's actually platinum, you should have said, I'm sorry, the premier plan, we put platinum, that's my mistake. The basic plan in the HSA plan. We've shown at the top section, this is what the in-network and out-of-network level of coverage is. So deductibles, home insurance, out-of-pocket, uh, emergency room, and then what the pharmacy co-pays are. You can see what those are for each of the individual plans. Remember, we went to Cigna and asked them to price out some of the plan differences. So plan changes there on the bottom, highlighted in red. So the premier plan, instead of being a $650 deductible, it will go to 1000 And instead of being a $1,300 family deductible, it will go to 2000 And so on and so forth. You can see what that is. Emergency, um, 85% co-insurance, <laughs> excuse me, the emergency room, $500 per visit. Now, if you're admitted, that's waived, but you have $500 uh, emergency room copay. On the basic plan, you can see those went up a little bit too from 1000 to 1500 on the single deductible. Family is 3000 Instead of 80%, it would be 75 and also a $500 copay on the, on the emergency room. Pharmacy for both of those plans, you can see on the right, there's this fourth level says $150. That would be the specialty copay. So if you were to get a specialty med, it would be today you'd pay 80. That would go to 150. Now, there are very few people, typically on the specialties, there's only like four to five percent of the members that take any specialty, and even that is high. Uh, but again, that would be it would be a higher copay. Uh, than what they would be paying today. On the HSA plan, as you can see, we have proposed no changes for any of those uh, benefits. If we go to slide 13, this is really the same thing, but we're going, you can see kind of what the plans are side by side. We've highlighted in yellow those particular changes that we spoke on. I don't need to go through all of those. Uh, I just wanted to show what those uh, would look like if you wanted to look at it from a side-by-side -side basis, including co-pays, urgent care, specialists, uh, inpatient, so on and so on and so on. Okay, if we could, let's go to slide 14. So here's where we're going to start getting into some of the uh, changes and how much value they have or how much savings the district can get. So at the top, as we talked about, um, the budget is about $50.6 million today, of which uh, the employees pay $12.9 million and the district pays $37.7 and $575 per employee per month. We, our needed budget, as we talked about earlier, is about $64 million, so there's about a $14 million deficit if, if you do decide to do nothing with that, uh, then we project that the plan will be in a deficit of almost $14 million. So here are four different ways that we could get uh, some or all of this money. So item number one, we've shown this as far as what kind of plan changes would occur and what kind of employee contributions would need to occur and then the impact of that. So for example, on the first one, if you made no plan changes at all, so that today plan, today's plans stay the same, but you doubled what the employees pay. If you did that, then you need 64.6, as you can see in that. The savings from the, pardon me, from the plan changes is zero, because remember, there's no plan change. So you're still 13.9 million. However, doubling, the contributions, you would get $12.9 million in additional monies that you're not getting today. So the plan would be in a deficit of a little over a million dollars. That's if you double the contributions for everybody. The second one would be, remember earlier we talked about 
plan changes. So those plan changes we saw in the highlighted in red a couple of slides ago, or the ones on uh, the previous slide that were in the highlighted in yellow in the box. Uh, if you did that and did not change the contributions for employees, so employees pay the same as they do today, we think you would only need $61.1 million. So it's a three and a half million dollar savings, but the plan instead of being about $13.9 million deficit, it would be about 10.4. That's if you just did those plan changes. If you did, the, if you got rid of the premier plan, so this is a, there's a couple of things with this. If you got rid of the premier plan, then essentially you would have the basic plan and the HSA plan. Those are the only two plans. From a contribution perspective, you would take, you know, you would take what people pay on the premier plan today, and that would be what they would pay for the basic plan. By doing that, we think you would need $56.6 million, of which you've created savings on the, on the removal of the plan, of the premier plan, of about $7.9 million. So claims would go down 7.9 million. And then for a contribution increase, because remember, the basic people would be paying more. That's about another $4.9 million. So you'd be about a million in the hole. A million deficit through the end of the following plan year. And then lastly, most extreme thing would be one, remove the premier plan as we spoke on. Two would be change that basic plan with increasing of deductibles uh, and out of pockets and so forth that we looked at a few slides ago. And increase the contributions or the, you know, get rid of the premier contributions, but they would then move over to the basic plan. By doing that, it's $52 million you would need. So the plan is going to get about $12 million out of that. The employee contribution, second to last column, you would get an additional $4.9 million from the employees. So the plan would actually be in a surplus of $3 million. Now, um, with these kind of things, you can mix and match, you know, add all of it. You can do it forever. But what we wanted to do here was we wanted to give you a little bit of a sense of scale as to. If you change the contributions, here's what's going to happen. If you change the plan a little bit, here's what's going to happen. If you got rid of a plan, here's what's going to happen. And then kind of a little bit of a mix and match between those two. If, you know, at the end of this, if you want us to look at any more, if you've had a chance to digest and perhaps talk amongst yourselves, it's easy for us to run different scenarios to figure out maybe some other ways to attack this. But these are just some samples of what we've come up with. So just sort of a couple of slides here. If we go to slide 15, you know, it was small. But essentially what this is, is this is what the race would look like if you doubled them for everybody. So on the left hand side, those numbers are, you can see who's in the plan, and then what the total rates are, and then on the right-hand side, right of that blue bar down the middle of the page, first column is what the current employees, currently employees pay, the next one would be what they would pay next year, and then the last column is the difference between the two. By doing that and not changing the plan, the district would still be projected to be in a deficit of roughly a million dollars, but employees are basically paying the brunt of the rate action. Okay, if we go to slide 16, which has option two, this is where we talked about changing the plan designs, but not having people pay anything more. The good thing about this is people pay what they pay today. However, um, with that, as we spoke earlier, deductibles go up, um, our pocket levels go up, the emergency room goes up, and so forth. Now, one of the questions we, we commonly get, I should have mentioned a couple slides ago, one of the questions we commonly get was, well, what happens if we were to change the office visit by $10 or $15 or even the pharmacy by $5 or $10? Generally, what we see is by doing that, you're really not moving the needle very much. Um, uh, 
move, but it's not really a lot. To really get more of a bang for your buck, you need to move the deductible levels out of pockets uh, and so forth, and even ER. And really, the ER isn't to get more get money out of people to go to the ER. The intent of the ER is to move people away from the emergency room uh, because many times they use that as their primary care and to try to go get them to go to the right provider uh, into the right circumstance. If we go to slide 17, this is where um, we got rid of the premier plan and we the premier plan contributions uh, change those to what the premier people are paying today. So by doing that, the HSA people don't have any impact. They pay the same as today and the plan is the same. The basic people, basic plan people, the plan is the same, but they would pay more out of their paycheck. So again, there's consideration that by doing that, you're still roughly about a million dollars shortfall at the end of the year. And then lastly, this is the combination of everything. This is the changing of the plan, and this is the getting rid of the premier plan. By doing that, you can see people's paycheck or the basic plan contribution increases. The plan designs that we spoke about excuse me, spoke on, those are changed too. By doing this though, we project we have a $3 million surplus. Um, so this is probably the most aggressive stance to do because you really have, remember you have three different things going on here. You're getting rid of a plan, you're taking the, the basic plan and increasing deductibles and so forth, and you're increasing what the employees pay out of the paycheck. So again, this is kind of a, um, the most aggressive but by doing this, we think it's actually going to be about a $3 million surplus in order to do that. So I know that there are a lot of, have a lot of numbers here and some scenarios. So I wanted to at least stop here before we get into any kind of next steps to see if there are any questions on what we've gone through. President, I have, Mr. Mann, I have a couple of questions. Yes, sure. sir, Mr. Mann. So you said if we rebid the uh, provider, uh, we can probably get better rates um, because of the fact of the COVID and their, some of these companies are a little bit more aggressive? So, so for example, I'll, I'll give an example. So um, you could, we have a client, uh, it's not in El Paso, but we, uh, they're actually down the valley. And they, uh, I think it was, well, I remember, I believe it was Aetna, and we've been to the plan. Mr. Gallagher, I can't hear you. Sorry? Hello? We didn't hear you. At least I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so there, there's, a, there's a district down in the valley. They had Aetna. They bid the plan. Blue Cross came in substantially better. Discounts were better. Network was better. And I believe they saved, oh, goodness, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, well over a million dollars, maybe $2 million. Just with the same plan, same everything. Uh, so Blue Cross in that example was very, very aggressive. We've also seen um, the reverse. We've also seen that with Aetna. Uh, quite aggressive in trying to uh, get or retain business. Now in the El Paso area, as you probably know, many of the public entities are either with Blue Cross or they're with Aetna. So uh, I think from a from a, a smaller network perspective, at, at this time, I do not believe Cigna has that kind of an option. I know that Aetna does, and I know that Blue Cross, uh, when they uh, get aggressive, I don't know if they have a narrow network, but they've been extremely aggressive with discounting. Their discounts tend to be better than everybody else. Um, and then even with stop loss, we find that their stop loss to, uh, is very, very attractive, uh, which essentially would uh, improve the liability, maximum liability that a district would have. So, pardon me, the point is that yes, there are some avenues to be able to try to and change that and maybe bidding the plan. Um, now, the thing with bidding the plan, and as Mario mentioned earlier, open enrollment is in April, which 
which is, you know, it's, you know, in a way, it's quite a ways away, and in some ways, it's not. We would anticipate, you know, after you've had a chance to digest this, if you wanted to bid the plan, I would think we would do this quite quickly. Ideally, we would like to see, um, and I'm just kind of talking on the top of my head, I would like to see the RFP out on to the street before Thanksgiving. And we would have responses back and then back to you, the, the, the floor, board workshop committee, uh, probably the first week or so of January, and then pick a winner by February. And I, I, I really, I'm kind of oversimplifying this, but, but make it to where there's enough time, if you do want to consider, they would have plenty of time to implement, be able to get things ready for any kind of open enrollment. Um, but also have time for the board uh, to, to make a decision uh, as need be. The further the further on it goes, it becomes a little more problematic. You don't want to try to shove things in because the closer you, the less time you give people to work on this, the more chance there is for potential errors. Uh, but if so, if you were looking to bid the plan to create a smaller network or even do better discounts and so forth, we would recommend trying to get that out. Uh, ideally, by Thanksgiving, maybe even you know by the end of the end of the month, latest the first week of December. Yes, sir. And my, my other question was, where is our savings? Since we opened up this employee clinic, shouldn't these numbers be going down? Shouldn't we have less claims? Or are we not going to see that till maybe next year? Mr. Mena, this I is Tony Davis. I, I, you know, I, I might kind of defer to Mario on this. I know, um, yeah. you know. Gary, yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mena, you're, you're correct. We are. Since the opening of the clinic, we are anticipating to see a savings, though we typically look at a 12 month to 24 month period of activity and the clinic opened in March. In addition to that, there's a variable that somewhat will skew the numbers that we have projected and that's due to the pandemic. Just to give you an example, um, when we started looking into bringing and implementing the project, uh, we were projecting to see possibly 12, 14, 16 visits a day. And thankfully, since, well, I guess in a sense, it's a good thing since the clinic opened and the pandemic came about, um, they've been able to see around 30 visits per day. So, um, or patients, I should say, consultations. So there is a, been a significant number of visits coming through but unfortunately, we don't have the amount of data that we would need to be able to make, a, I guess, a, a um, projection in terms of the savings. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tony, was that you right now? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I was just going to say what I'm going to reiterate what Marty was talking about, and that is it, it's, it'll take a little bit of time for us to generate those savings to kind of see the actual numbers in the financials. For the for the healthcare fund, but but I do have a question, and my question is, if the premier plan is losing money, then what 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 can we do to change that plan, and make it successful, and perhaps leave the basic plan the same since it's not losing money, and perhaps couple that with uh, providing a network, a narrow network for hospitalization costs, and hopefully reduce that, because we because for us to change, um, I guess bid out the plan, that would be a really quick turnaround. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe these other avenues can save us a little bit of time and so forth. At least see if that's possible. So you're right. So the timing is pretty quick. I think we, we've all kind of spoken about that uh, as far as getting it out and making sure things are getting implemented in case there were kind of a change. As far as the premier plan goes, um, the deductible right now for the premier plan is $650. That is an extremely low number. Most of the districts that we have do not have deductibles below $1,000. So I think what, what we would suggest is if you want to keep the premier plan, I think it's a couple things. One, I, I definitely think you need to get the deductible at least up to $1,000. Possibly even say $1,250. Um, you need to increase 
uh, increase the emergency room, increase the out pockets. You have to change the plan to give the employees that more skin of the game. Secondly, because that plan is running so high, this is, pardon me, I think uh, the district should also consider to substantially increase what comes out of a person's paycheck for that. Because I think what can happen is the story that you can convey to members and say, look, this plan, the district is really hurting on this particular plan. Now, want to get rid of it, that's fine. But if you want, if you as a member, you want that plan, you want the lower deductibles and the richest benefits, that's fine. You're going to have to pay for it. And your payroll deductions are going to have to go up quite a bit in order to do that. Now, is it going to be able to get it to $13, $14 million? Probably not. But if we may be able to get some of it, I think this is again where I spoke earlier about trying to um, do some, you know, any scenarios, change a plan to X, increase contributions by Y, and see what that would look like, you know, some additional options here. That's what way, that's one way I could do it because right now, I don't think, even though there's only 25% of the people in there, uh, it, it's high. You know, they could be sick people, I get that, but fourth year population is sick, generally we don't see that. And I'm just simply suggesting that, I mean, with, I mean, you're looking at about, 64 60 percent of the of, of our of our employees are using the basic plan and and i and i don't see why they would have to yes sir uh, I'm, I'm just simply saying is that um there's a possibility that you have a majority of the employees if you do changes to the premier plan and leave the basic there's a there's a not there's a possibility that a majority of the employees using the healthcare plan will not be impacted fiscally. Correct. You know, and another thing too uh, that we would like to see is uh, more people going to the HSA plan. Uh, so you can see there are only there's only like I think it was 83 was the number uh, that are in that plan out of 5400. That's Far less, that's only like, you know, two, three percent, two percent, less than two percent, actually. Um, so we would like to see more people go into that particular plan. Now, generally, in order to get people into an HSA type of plan, you have to, uh, we found that the, the districts that have the most success in getting enrollment into the HSA plan have to give people some HSA money. A couple of different ways you can do that. Uh, I've seen some where they give people an amount of money into an HSA per month, $50, $75, something like that. So over the course of a year, you know, if it's $50 a month, so for 12 months, that's $600 a year. That would be a way to set some people may want to do that. Second way I've seen it done is you give people a chunk of money at the beginning of the plan year and that's it uh so let's say i mean we have a client that um if you're in the hsa plan you get and you have single coverage you have 500 dollars at the beginning of the plan and more throughout the rest that's fine you can do that and the flip side of just doing that is health savings accounts it's like a bank account and it's your money so if i was a district employee and you gave me fifty dollars a month. Okay, great. If I were to leave three months into the year, well, that fifty dollars is mine, and I can take it with me. So, so that just to understand that that's that's how those particular plans uh, work. And in order to get some of that in there, to um, get some people into those particular plans, you may need to give some agents that money. And we can model out what that looks like. That's easy enough to do on our side. But just understand, this is what we find for the districts that have the most success putting people into the HSA plan. You need to give them a little bit of a carrot to do it. Thank you. Ms. Nahra, this is Mr. Guerra. Yes, sir, Mr. Guerra. I'll tell you the plan I like. If you go to page 10, slide 13, ways to mitigate costs. 
I like number four, where nothing changes and we just go out to bid on the medical plan for deeper discounts. I, you know, I get it. I know we need to raise. Premier? Well, I'm just saying we need to go back and I believe before we go out there and look at changing the plans, which I know we've been wanting to do that, but it's not like we're penalizing the premier plan because it's more of a deficit. And I don't think that's, that, that, that should be accurate. So I believe before we change anything, and we're, and correct, Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, we're, what was it, $13.9 million in deficit? And for the past 10 years they've been on the board, we've always been over $10 million in deficit. If I'm not mistaken, yes. is that correct, Tony? Yes, sir. That's that's because we put in nine million dollars this past year. We transferred in from the general fund. We we put in another nine. Team, yes, sir. So, I mean, right now our our reserves are eleven point two million dollars as of the end of October. Okay, and that's because we we put in those what uh, eighteen million dollars the last two years, another four point five the year before. I mean, so that is why. But we can't continue to do that because. We're putting in what six thousand nine hundred dollars per employee per year, and then we're putting in an additional nine million dollars above that. So, it we have to change the plan because we can't sustain it. Uh, so currently, it's a healthy fund balance. It's a healthy, I should say, net position, technically speaking. It has. So, I mean, we, we're, you're going to see that we ended up the fiscal year as of June thirtieth with about almost fourteen million dollars because of the of the infusions or the transfers we're bringing in. So uh, right now it's a healthy reserve, but we're gonna have to start drawing down the amount of money that we put in over and above the nine, uh, the $6,900 per employees that we put in during the year. Out of the four plans, Gary, which one, which one is Gallagher coming back and highly recommending? Oh, uh, if it were me, Slide uh, 14. What I, first thing, well, let me back up. First thing I would do, I would bid the plan. I think if there's a way to mitigate some of those costs by switching vendors, I'll use kind of a fake number. If you want to go to Blue Cross and would say $5 million, that's a pretty good chunk. Think that would be something to do, and it would maybe change the discussion a little bit. But I don't say I at least I don't know for a fact, but I would strongly anticipate you're not going to save 14 million dollars by going to another carrier. What I would do is, I think you have to change the plans to some degree, and I also think you need to change what the employees pay to some degree. Again, a lot of it is intertwining. If you were to save the plan, if you would save money by moving to another carrier, if you were to tweak the plan a little bit to try to drive down claim costs, and you would increase the employee contributions a little bit, you may be able to get a pretty good chunk of that $14 million that you need, possibly even all of it, depending upon what you find out from the bid. employee contributions, I don't think that's going to fly. I just wanted to give you a sense of how much it would, what it would look like. Removing the premier plan, that's a hard one. I mean, you're basically putting 25% of the people calling you off and being upset. Um, so I think I think you need to bid it. I think you need to change the plan to some degree, and then I do think you need to change contributions to a degree. Now, whether that's all plans or certain plans, I think a lot of that depends upon what we uh, see from the results of the bid. Mr. Lisa, Mr. Cremona. And let's face it, too. Um, one quick item, though, we did this exercise, uh, this projection using claims for September, while, you know, the, the plan takes effect in July. If claims in, say, October, November, December get a little bit better, we may not need that amount of money because typically the past is a good indicator of the future. So, um, go up, I understand that, but I think um, <clears throat> we can continue to modify this as more and more claims 
coming coming the door. But it's not gonna you're not gonna have suddenly go from twenty seven to two. It's just, that's not gonna happen. So um Mario, when when do the uh, stop loss premiums get released? Don't they get released really close to April? Yes, sir. So wouldn't we have a little bit? We we would need more lead time to go out for, in my opinion, for for a carrier, right? Correct. I mean, I mean, it's just a very very short timetable time uh, time frame that we have. I I do think, Mr. Guerra, that um, I mean, we have enough reserves. I think to carry us. I mean, it's gonna. We'll see how it goes through the year. Um, if it's the board's intention to do this, I would ask the board to consider pushing that until next early next year. Let us let us because I, I think it takes time to review uh, the carrier, uh, what's planned. I'm not exactly sure we're going to see that much money, but that's just my opinion. Mario, um, uh, any comments? Um, the only I guess reminder would be to stress the fact that. Um, open enrollment is coming up It's typically we need to be ready by and this is just it doesn't necessarily have to happen in the month of april we could push it as we did this year to the month of may but the further we delay the actual open enrollment that also delays the uh, implementation of whether, whether it's a vendor or setting up systems and so on so that that would be my only concern that whatever uh, decision we decide or direction we take that could possibly impact any other process to include the open enrollment period. Well, if I could jump in, a quick comment. Um, I think one of the things that uh, is confusing, and, and many of you confused by this, um, I think we want to be careful and understand that reviewing uh, a medical carrier, you know, Blue Cross or City of whoever, reviewing them is different than reviewing the stop loss protection. Generally speaking, we, uh, we bid the medical plan as a whole, and what you're doing is you're chasing to see are there any programs they have that can improve costs, do they have better discounts, you know, network issues, those kinds of things are ways that you can um, determine whether there's going to be savings by moving to that. <laughs> Secondly, as Mario was saying, then you would bid the stop loss coverage. That's the protection for large claims and total claims. Um, that usually occurs about 90 days prior to the effective date, so around April. You generally make a decision on that, say, May. June obviously the latest, but generally May. So, so try not to confuse the bidding of a medical plan covering the stop loss uh, large claim protection. I have a question, Ms. Najera. Yes, sir, Mr. Menon. Uh, yes, uh, you, you mentioned something about the companies, these carriers are very aggressive right now because of the COVID. So if we bid it out, uh, will we get a better rate than if we wait till next year? And the other thing is, you know, if we wait till next year, we may we may be in a different situation. That's that's my concern. Now, if we don't like what they tell us, we always stay with the same period. So um, yes, we are seeing some of the marketplace being very aggressive. You know, what they tend to do is to try to show what the savings would be, whether you know, allowances or discounting and so forth, uh, to try to get you to go over to them, which is, that's fine. That's good. That's really what we want. Waiting to next year, you can absolutely do that. Now, will this uh, aggressive stance be the same as it is next year? That's, boy, that's really hard to say. You know, if I could predict what's going to happen this year with certainty, man, I, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I'm doing something else. But sure. uh, you know, all of you know, all, all these carriers they want business. I, I get it. sometimes that sometimes are more aggressive than other times. And right now, as I was saying, we're seeing um, some of the vendors be pretty aggressive, more than I've seen in 
few years trying to make sure to get business. And again, I think some of it's because of COVID, because not many employers are moving or even considering moving. And everybody still has their goals that they need to make. So they're trying to do pull out all the stops, if you will, to try to write business. Ms. Nakara, this is uh, Rudy Campoya, if I may. Yes, sir, Mr. Campoya. I, I just wanted to um, just notify the board that what we were trying to do today is kind of like let you all know, you know, the options that we have to try to save money. However, in my opinion, I am with Mr. Ressa as far as going out for a bit to replace Cigna. I don't think we have the time to do that. We do have to do something to try to save money. Uh, due to the pandemic, you know, that, that kind of throws a, a wrench at us. However, I strongly feel that the clinic is going to help us. So this year, um, I guess we're going to probably meet in the next month or so to come up with a plan and then present something to the board, either in, in January, latest February, as Mr. Carmona said, we do have to have some type of plan ready before open enrollment. However, I strongly feel that we should not go out for bed just yet and possibly hold off until next year. And I don't know if Mr. Reza agrees or disagrees with, with that. Uh, I just want to say that uh, it's, um, it's, it's a really quick turnaround because we have to get the proposals ready. We have to send it out before Thanksgiving, which is the week after next. Um, um, I, I do think we need to continue evaluating the plan. Uh, perhaps there's possibilities. Um, it, it's just, it's uh, it's quick. Ms. Navarro, this is Mr. Guerra again. Yes, sir, Mr. Guerra. And, and, and these are tough decisions, but we don't want to make quick decisions. So I would like to see that possibly, and I believe for the past couple of years, uh, Mr. Campoya and Mr. Carmona, when the four of us were on the board back then, we raised it up probably like $50, I believe, every year, I think it was. Is that correct? We we had three phases. I don't remember the amount, Mr. Guerra, but we did it in three phases. We did a phase one, phase two, and phase uh, three, and I believe it was $40. Mr. Carmona can chime in, but yeah, that's what... And I, and I believe it was something like that. And then when I'm looking at these options, these are drastic options. This yes, is sir. huge options. I, I don't like these options, but I understand we need to do it. But these are not baby steps. We're taking baby steps of $50 and $40. Now we're looking at removing the plan, raising the deductibles. And I get it. It's like we're trying to catch up. Why don't we just slow down? Let's go for a rebid. And if we have to wait next year, we'll wait next year. Can we sustain, Tony, another year? Yes, sir. I, I don't believe that we can put in $9 million again. I think we would have to maybe cut well, that in Ressa, half. Mr. Ressa, it upsets me because we go through this every year and everything, and we would say, we can do this, we can do it, and we find a way to do something. So I'm looking at these options, and I don't like these four options because these are not baby steps. These are drastic decisions, and this is, this is a lot of money. When we're looking at the $50, $40 the past couple of years, now we're looking at raising it a couple of hundred dollars. I don't like that one bit, but I get it. I get it. I know we need to raise it, but I, I'm still in, let, let's take baby steps. Right now, it's not, the, it's not the right time to raise the insurance rates on, on individuals. Yes, sir. Per, perhaps we could look at um, something a lot smaller. Uh, and again, it would be up to the board whether they want to accept it or not. We're going to continue to provide um, a transfer in to the healthcare fund. I'm simply saying is that I don't know if it could be 9 million this year. We might have to cut it in half and put in four, 4 million to, to keep it uh, sound while the board looks at what recommendation and the board says, no, let's wait, let's bid it out. And then we can do that. At least we have some time to be able to do that for the, the year after next. I, I agree. And if maybe you could put in a board package where we, where we raised it a couple of years ago, so the rest, so we can see it again and say, hey, we only went $40 four years ago or five years ago. And then we look at the drastic, then we could go back and maybe offset something. But if we're going $40 a year increments in three stages, and now we want to do this, guys, it don't make sense to me. 
Yes, sir. This President Najera, this is Ms. Rodriguez. Yes, Ms. Rodriguez. You know, in looking at all these numbers, yes, there, there are drastic things that, that we as a board need to do, but it's at this time, I'm very concerned with like, that it's already been mentioned with the, and I know these are just ideas of, of how to try to offset the cost. Um, but in looking at some of these ideas, it's, it's a lot. And I know one of the recommendations was to try to get more employees to go on to, into the HSA plan. Now, my thoughts behind that, is that good for our employees or is it good financially for the district? I, I would like to just put it out there to say, I understand we need to do what's financially sound for the district, but I'm not willing to consider something that is not going to be good for our employees and our staff. Um, secondly, in looking at a different carrier, um, again, I, I've seen some of the other plans, the other carriers, the other companies, um, Cigna's been very good to us and, and to our staff. So I know if we bid out, we may get a better plan, may, be, may get a better cost. But again, how is that going to affect our, our employees? Are they going to have to change doctors? Are they going to have to look at, you know, other things? So in looking, again, in looking at some of the recommendations, some of the things we can consider, um, you know, again, such drastic amounts out of pocket for employees, especially right now when we have employees that count on, for example, our bus drivers, they, they count on other um, routes that they can pick up. I, I, I don't know. I, I just think we really need to look at other options here. I guess it wasn't really a question, but more for consideration on additional ideas, additional numbers, additional things that we can consider like Mr. Guerra was saying, you know, can we look at increment, you know, increments, not so it's not such a, a huge burden. It would help the district some way, but it would also not put the complete burden on, on, on our employees. This is Nagira. Yes, sir. Um just want to say a few things. Uh, you know, I've been hearing this, and you know, it, 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 uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Guerra for a while. I thought it was me speaking. Hey, man, thank God you jumped in on that one. Uh, I'm going to tell you that um, we're going to have to do a lot of uh, soul searching here, and we're going to have to uh, get creative because I'll, I'll let you know right now. I mean, uh, we had this conversation a while back, and I've always said it, that we always got to be prepared for, for situations. You know, when COVID started, it was one of the things I, that I kept saying is that, that we need to watch what we're doing because sooner or later it's going to come back at us and we're going to be, you know, in a deficit. In the same token, um, we need to be again, creative on what we're going to do here. We need to see every option that is available to us because I'll tell you this, there's a lot of people hurting and there's some people that are fortunate, but there's a lot of people hurting right now. 
and to add to their burden, I can't do that. I just can't. I'm not, there's too many employees. There's different situations out there. And to add more to their plate, well, I'm sorry, it's just adding, you know, uh, salt tins, I mean, tinsel. It's just, we can't. We need to get creative here. We need to figure something out. If it's going out and placing the bid to see what we get, then I'm for it. I mean, there's a, like you said, there's a lot of options here that we really need to sit down and we need to sit down pretty quick. We need to start having some, some, some really good conversations now with all people at stake. We need to get our, our associations involved here and say, Hey man, you know, what are you guys thinking? Because we got a major problem here that we need to fix and passing the buck on to our employees. You know, I'm sorry, we've done it for the, you know, we've been, we've been not passing the buck, but we've been, uh, you know, we've been supporting our employees with a, because, you know, we need, we know they need this help and we've been, and we've been there to help them out to make those decisions, you know, by, by always putting that 9 million in every year. Um, we need to figure something out. You know, we need to figure something out. We need to get a, our heads together here. And, and like I said, sit down and have a couple of meetings real quick and, and figure it out on which way we need to go, which is going to best benefit the district and its employees. But we need to do this pretty quick. Thank you. So I, can, so I can tell you one, one of the quick items here. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, I can tell you that for January of 21, we, uh, we were working, pardon me, with actually one of your neighbors, neighbors with Islada, and they ended up uh, going into uh, a, what's called an accountable care organization, which really is a smaller network. They kind of did the narrow network thing, and they stayed with the same carrier. Uh, saved some money. Uh, I can't remember the number. It was about 2 or $3 million, if I recall. It, don't quote me on that, but it was some, some amount of money. Uh, and they were able to keep benefits pretty good for the employees. Now they had Aetna before. So I guess say that was a situation where they needed to make some changes and they decided to go down more the network route. Now, the good thing for them was that, you know, and they had that available. I'm not sure at this moment, Cigna does. That's why uh, I was talking earlier about, you know, network is fun, yet, and I understand timing is quick. You want to get some of the least disruption to people from a plan and contribution perspective. I, even though it is pretty tight, I still could. I do think you still have time to potentially bid the plan. Uh, and that if, for example, if you have the identical costs, or uh, identical contributions and plan designs today, but you have Blue Cross, for example, and you saved half of that money, would it be worth it? You know, th those are the kinds of things that I think maybe you could, yeah, you know, again, talk about yourselves. Something to consider to try to minimize any kind of employee disruption from a design and paycheck uh, perspective. Is it Nada, Mr. Mena again? Yes, sir, Mr. Mena. I believe that uh, we should bid this this plan in switch couriers because we do need to take care of our employees. You know, um, especially through this pandemic. Um, and it's not the, it's not right now. It's not a good time to to increase any um, any fees um, due to the fact that people are already struggling. You know, may have some 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 of our employees that probably have a spouse that lost their job or et cetera, and they're struggling enough. You know, they're struggling already. So I believe that we really need to take care of our employees, especially this year. And I know, Mr. Reza, you told me that uh, you said that it's it's not. It's not a good time to to search for a courier right now for another carrier, but you know, I think I think it is the best time right now because they're they're aggressive, and I think we'll get a better plan. Um, that's just my opinion. Thank you. Um, I know we went out two years ago and bid for a new plan, and we weren't happy with. Uh, the coverage, and so we decided to stay with Cigna. Uh, you know, going back to what Mr. Rodriguez said, at this time, I, I, you know, hesitate to try to put our employees through 
a whole new plan change when them, they may have to go to a new doctor. Uh, it may cost them more. And, 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 and yes, the bottom line is whatever we do, it's probably going to cost them some more because we're going to have to make some kind of changes. Uh, my concern with taking this out for bid is that timing is so short. I don't want to rush this. And in order to have it completed uh, in plenty of time for open enrollment, for our employees to be able to look at this, it, it concerns me to rush it. I'm not saying that we rushed a bit. We, we take our time, we bid it out. When we get the proposal, we get the proposals. We continue what we're doing right now, but we have the plan in, in hand. When we get the bids coming back, if we still say Cigna is a better carrier or they can lower their underpricing, then we win. And if they don't, then, I mean, we can't continue this $10 million, nine, $10 million every year. This is not this is Tony Dessa. We probably don't have to go with the lowest bidder all the time. If Cigna's not if Cigna's just a little bit higher, we could continue with Cigna. But at least we're going out, taking care of employees, and letting them know we're trying to find them some better pricing. You're right. Two years ago, we had some obstacles and we changed, I believe it was with, with tenant, if I'm mistaken. And we had some no, we issues. We stayed with Cigna. We right. were with Cigna and we stayed with Cigna because we preferred their coverage for our employees. And I'm sure Mr. Uh, Reza can can tell us what the bid was last time, how much uh, we decided to go and go back with Cigna if uh, they were higher or lower. But if we do a rebid, maybe Cigna may be a little bit lower. Uh, Mr. Reza, did you have a comment? I, I was just going to suggest for the board's consideration is that allow us to look at the what week we can rebid right now. Perhaps we can just look at the hospitalizations and maybe break it down into certain pieces so it's not the overall package. And then we can see what we can bid as we go through the spring uh, and see what we can incorporate into the plan for 21-22. And if we don't fit that time frame, we can continue looking to bid and then maybe we can put it out for the year after that. I mean, I, let me. I need to talk to Mr. Campoya, Mr. Carmona, I, and Mr. Garcia. Uh, and in the meantime, we can look at our plan again and see if maybe we can suggest incremental changes to the plan that we currently have, and see if the board's amenable to that. And then we use the reserves that we have this this year, along with the contribution that I talked about for this year, uh, to help us to kind of like I like to use this word as a bridge to kind of get us to the following year and see if we can present something to the board that, that the whole board would accept. Um, uh, Mr. Campoya, Mr. Carmona, any any concerns with that proposal? Uh, I know I'm just bringing it up, but. No, no, sir, uh, this is Mr. Campoya. Uh, I think that that would probably work due to the timing that we have for open enrollment, which is coming up in April. But I think that we can, possibly do things concurrently and go out for bid and then see what comes up uh, like Mr. Yara suggesting, but it wouldn't be for this coming year because we would have open enrollment in, in April, but we can look at, at it for the 21-22 school year. Was it 22-23? Yeah. 22, 22, yeah. Uh, Mr. Mena, you had a question? Yes, yes, this is for 2020. I like that plan, but you said it's for the hospitalization. I heard is that did I hear that right? Only? Yes, sir. I mean, we could look at first the, the, a network. In other words, we can start with that first and see if there's any proposals to see if we can do a survey to see if if um, if our employees are uh, prefer one particular chain to another, and then we can go out for bids and see uh, okay which one can get us the better deal. And if we can do that, perhaps we can tweak the plan. And then we can look at the other uh, parts of our whole healthcare plan. Uh, in other so words, you would, for, right, so you would do that right now, right? The hospitalization bid, rebid? 
that's what I like to talk to Mr. Campoya, Mr. Carmona, and Mr. Garcia about. I think I think that's something we can do um, within the time frame for this upcoming year, and then in the spring, uh, with the board's consideration, the board's approval, we can look at the other parts of our package and see if that would be amenable, not for next year, but the year after that. I like that. Personally, I like that plan. So Mr. Carmona, Mr. Campoya, any? Ms. Nahara? Yes, Mr. Morales. Yes, in listening to everything that was discussed, what we've been discussing, one of the things I've, I've, I've noted here is that we've had to, I have to agree with what you said. You, you said that uh, we still have that deficit. Uh, Tony, can you hear me? Tony Ressa? What exactly is that cost to the district? Exactly, to the, I know it's, so, the, it's 10 million maybe? So, so yes, sir. So uh, this year uh, we do have a, a um, the fiscal year that just ended, uh -huh. we had about, without the transfer was about almost, uh, I think about four, four and a half million. Um, right now, this year, we're already in the hole, 2.6 million. So it's kind of equate to that 6 million. So, um, but, but we're, but you know, we still have the, those reserves to cover us for the rest of the year. Um, what, what are you projecting for the year? I mean, I know that somebody mentioned $10 million is basically, when it's all said and done. Yes, sir. I, I, um, I let me, can I study this and maybe provide you this information at our finance committee meeting on Monday? I, no, I mean, I'm not I, trying I, to, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to get, get a finite uh, uh, figure. I'm just trying to make a point. The fact of the matter is when I and two other board members, Mr. Gar, uh, Mr. Garcia, and Mr. Manda came aboard, the first thing we discussed was this benefit plan uh, as far as uh, the insurance for our employees. It's the first thing we talked about. I, I really rem I remember that almost two years ago. And one of the things we talked about was the cost to the district. Well, I'm, pr I'm proposing that we put a plan as a board to figure out what we could do to, to, to shave each year that deficit. It seems to me like we're spinning our wheels. Two years ago, we were in the same boat. Here we are, you know, uh, two years, a year later, same. And we're still saying, well, we have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, be, uh, and, and I understand, you know, we have to be sympathetic and we have to be uh, um, understanding with our employees, but we also have to take care of our district. I know Mr. Gunner mentioned last, uh, last early in the, in the summer that uh, because of funding uh, to the district, because of COVID, we could be in a deficit overall. We could, we could be hurting. And if we don't take action now and put a plan together, I mean, I could say things, we can all say things. We have to actually sit down and put a plan together to where we can uh, cut each year. So we're not sitting at the same place every year. And I think that's where we're missing the boat. I mean, we have 30 pages of all these different uh, ideas and plans that we can, but I think we're missing the boat. I really believe that we have to plan ourselves how we're gonna get this cost down and I, I've, I've worked in four districts and Socorro's got the best benefits for their employees. Nobody, nobody compared to anyone uh, being El Paso, uh, Canotillo or Clint and I'm telling you we do and we and if you those districts and try to pick, get what we get and, and our, for our employees there's no comparison they, they can't I, and I mean that we've got to start looking a little bit differently at it and, and if we have to, we have to put a plan as a board, sit down and figure out what we're going to do to cut this cost down, because that's the only way we can go, especially the deficit because of it and our, our funding is going to be shortened or cut uh, for this next year. You got a good point, Mr. Morales. Um, are there any other questions? Hey, I believe what I'm hearing from all of our board members uh, is that we do need more options. Uh, the four options that we have here, as Mr. Guetta said, they are extreme. I mean, it's from one end to the other. If uh, y'all could get together and maybe focus on somewhere meeting in the middle. Uh, and like Mr. Ressa, uh, 
mentioned, maybe going out to bid for hospitalizations. See, see what those bid options are for us since our time frame is kind of short right now. Uh, but if y'all could get together and bring us more options, is that possible? Yes, ma'am. Now, would you, would the board want a board workshop in December to review those additional options? My opinion is yes. If, if y'all could do that for December, because I, I feel like the sooner we move on this, the more time our employees have. I agree. We'll, we'll start working on that and then we'll work with Claudia to set up another board workshop in December. Fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Campoya. Does anyone have any other questions? And Mr. Heisel, were, were we done? <laughs> with your presentation or do you have I, more? I think, well, I think uh, I thought it was a good discussion. Uh, I think it was good questions for me. I, that's all I had from a presentation perspective. I think it was good, good discussions. You know, we can come back with some more information, as was mentioned, for the uh, you know meeting in December. Uh, we can work, obviously, with Mr. Campoyo and Mr. Carmona on this. Um, but, yeah, as far as what we have for you, that, that was the extent of our presentation. Okay, thank you so much. And we, we do deeply appreciate all of your work that's gone into this. And, and yes, there are some options, but I'd like for the board to be able to have a broader sense of options from you know zero to 100, basically. And, and there is a lot to be considered here, especially the fact that we are all going through this pandemic. We want the impact not to hurt our employees and any more than we must, uh, but thank you so much for your work. Right, not, not a problem at all. We look forward to continue working with this and coming back with some additional options for the board uh, sometime in the near future. Fantastic. Does anyone else have any questions or concerns at this time? No, thank you. Okay, guys, if that is it, I believe uh this workshop has come to a close and we will adjourn the time is 6 57. thank you all so very much and please stay safe thank you everyone thank you